Greetings and salutations. How you doing? Thanks for hanging out with me for a while. This is going to be an interesting video, I think, if you are somebody who is curious about all of the different flavors of Ubuntu. We're not going to talk about all of them. We'll talk about a few of them. I hadn't really planned on doing a video quite like this. I had an idea that we might be revisiting some of the different desktop environments that you can get on Ubuntu and talking about it, seeing how they looked after some time because we did a bunch of that about a year ago and I like to revisit things every now and again. But it didn't work out that way. What I ended up doing was taking a brief tour of a few of the official Ubuntu flavors and I'm going to give you my impressions on that and as I was doing that I posted screenshots on the Easy Linux Facebook page and so I got a lot of great comments from people who follow what I post on Facebook and I figured that not only in this video would I give you my impressions of some of those desktops I would also talk about uh, what other people have had to say will respond to some of those comments as well so this should be kind of a fun, rambly, hangout kind of video. If you're down for that, then uh, stick around. So first, just a little bit of explanation for those who might be going, what is an Ubuntu flavor? Ubuntu is a distribution of Linux, which is distributed by a company called Canonical. And they have a main distribution, which comes directly from Canonical and is developed by the people that work for Canonical and the community that contributes to it. And that one comes with the GNOME desktop these days. They used to have their own desktop called Unity, which they dropped a few years ago, and now they just adapt the mainline GNOME 3 desktop experience to kind of look and act the way Unity did. So that's Ubuntu. There are people out there who want to run Ubuntu as a base system but they'll put other desktops on it. So you have Ubuntu available with the XFCE desktop, KDE, Mate, Budgie, just it, it goes on and on. I don't really know how many flavors there are and the official flavors of Ubuntu are ones that are blessed by Canonical. These are community-driven projects that have access to Canonical's build servers. So they build in step with what the main Ubuntu distribution is doing. And it's, it's very cool because that allows us a lot of choice, but it still maintains a certain level of quality from flavor to flavor in Ubuntu. It's a very neat community driven thing that they're doing the company canonical there so you take a distribution let's say like Linux Lite or elementary OS or even Linux Mint those are not official flavors what they have to do is take the official release of Ubuntu when it comes along and sort of back engineer it and then figure out what they want to do to change it which isn't necessarily a bad thing Linux Mint these days is developed kind of alongside Ubuntu because they have so much in their own repositories that they use. They really just use the Ubuntu based system. And I kind of tell people all the time that Linux Mint is more Ubuntu compat compatible than it is an Ubuntu spin with a different desktop and a different environment on it. There are a lot of distributions that are based on Ubuntu that are not official flavors and many of them they're nothing more than a base Ubuntu with a couple of uh, private package archives PPAs connected to it and that provides the desktop those tend to be less stable than something like a Linux Mint which is very aggressively developed or the official flavors of Ubuntu so I personally recommend to most people hey use an official flavor of Ubuntu or stay with Linux Mint if you want to be in this whole kind of Debian Ubuntu world. And I'm not knocking anybody else. There's Pop OS, there's Elementary OS, and there's people out there who use them all the time. But for me, I like to stick pretty close to mainline Ubuntu. So the first operating system we'll talk about actually is Linux Mint because some people think that this is a totally Mint dedicated project, that Easy Linux is all about Mint, and that is because of the fact that I generally recommend this 
as a starting point. If you are brand new to Linux, you're stuck in Windows hell, or you're tired of dealing with Mac and you want to jump into Linux and you don't know anything about it, and maybe you're not the most super computer savvy person on the planet either, this is the place to start because it's a very complete, polished, ready-to-go distribution. There are a lot of reasons why Mint stands out as a starter distro for people. Sometimes I recommend another flavor of Ubuntu, an official flavor, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. But for most people, it's Linux Mint, especially somebody who doesn't really want to tinker. They just want to get going. They want to start learning. I used Linux Mint off and on as my main distro for years. I mean, for a very long time. I have switched back and forth through the years from Ubuntu to Linux Mint, depending on what either project is doing at that time. My personal distro of choice is Ubuntu right now, and it has been since early 2018. But that doesn't mean that I think Linux Mint is any less of anything. It just happens to be easier for me on my network of computers here at home to administer Ubuntu, and I can maintain a, these different machines that the family uses and stuff like that. I have a whole network environment set up. And the people in the house here have really gotten into using Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop. They like that experience. And when I try and move them back to something else, they go, uh, kind of like what that was doing. Linux Mint just got through upgrading from 19.1 to 19.2. We covered that here on the channel. And it just gets better and better as time goes on. This is one of the most stable distributions and great to start out. Yet. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about Mint up front to let you guys know, hey, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be talking about Mint or doing things about Mint. On the contrary, probably going to be doing a lot more content about Mint. We're just talking about Ubuntu this time around, basically. So the version of Ubuntu that I use on a daily basis is Ubuntu 18.04, the official regular vanilla Ubuntu that you download from Canonical. And the reason why I use this is because for what I do, making these videos and administering the Easy Linux web page, and I do some software stuff with GitHub uh, for that kind of thing, I have found this to be just fantastically useful and very stable. I mean, it doesn't crash on me. It just keeps working. And uh, I, I had a funny article that I put up on the Facebook page not too long ago where I said, I've been gnomed where it, you get so used to the workflow of the GNOME 3 desktop. You know, some people just hate GNOME. They can't stand it, and they don't see why you can use it. Well, the reasons why those people hate it is actually the reasons why I like it, because once you get used to this workflow, man, it, it, you get stuck on it. So... This has been my distribution of choice. It's not perfect. There are some bugs here, especially when dealing with VirtualBox. And I do like to run a lot of virtual machines, not only to demonstrate things in videos, but just to have a, a machine running with a distribution that I may not use every day or might be not on a machine that I can get to every now and again. So if somebody asks a question, then I can always log into that virtual machine and say, oh, you go here and you click there and you do that. So I have lots of reasons for running virtual machines. And that's been kind of the downside. A lot of people were telling me all of these wonderful things about Ubuntu Mate. So this is the first flavor we're going to look at. This is also the flavor that I would recommend second to Linux Mint for people who are starting out with Linux for the first time. I would recommend this to people who want to have a more hands-on, active uh, experience as they set up their system, simply because it has so many tweaks in it. You have the wonderful software boutique where you can download all kinds of software and put it on your machine, even if it's not necessarily in the official Ubuntu repositories, you can get it and it will install. And then we have the welcome screen, which walks you through the process of installing your codecs and getting updated. And then there's the Ubuntu tweak, uh, the 
Ubuntu Mate Tweak Tool that it ships with this that has all kinds of different desktop layouts and window manager choices and all kinds of crazy stuff. This is a wonderful distribution to play around with and dig around in and it runs very well. It has great what we call QT integration. See the desktops that we're looking at here they are GTK based which is the toolkit that is used to write software. And Ubuntu proper it's not so great. It's not the greatest GTK integration. It doesn't necessarily always follow the theme and uh, you're going to be the main thing about Ubuntu's flavors is that they all seem to at least have the same fonts. If you open up a GTK application next to a QT application, then you'll end up with the same font size even if the theme doesn't necessarily follow. But uh, Ubuntu Mate has great QT integration and a great development team behind it and a wonderful community. And one of the guys who is just absolutely indispensable to the Easy Linux project is Jeremy O'Connell at CyberWeb Solutions. And this is what he runs. He's been running it since 1604 and just got him moved over to 1804 a couple months ago. <laughs> And he's, he loves it. He's been rolling on. This particular distribution is administered, uh, well, headed by a fellow named Martin Wimpress, who's one of the nicest people in the Linux world. And he works for Ubuntu full-time these days, plus does the official flavor Ubuntu Mate. So if you want to ask somebody why I'm pronouncing M-A-T-E as Mate, Go ask him, because that's the way he says it. So I gave this a go for the first time in a long time, and everything worked really well. I was very impressed. I didn't come across any bugs. Everything that I installed worked. If you want a kind of a different experience, maybe you've been around Linux for a while. Maybe you used to use Linux back when GNOME 2 was the thing and you, you like that environment, this is definitely the one to go with. Maybe it just appeals to you because it's relatively simple. It's a great distribution to start out with. Uh, my one complaint with it is the fact that it's not quite as easy to customize as XFCE is, which is the next desktop we're going to take a look at. You uh, tend to have it's just a little bit more fiddly when it comes to like moving icons around and things like that but from a performance point of view it's awesome and the last time around I used this I really didn't run into any bugs and one of the nice things is that they have uh, choices that you can have now for uh, compositors so that if you're running into some screen tearing issues that you can turn on compositing you can use compiz and then they have Marco. They used to have Compton, but they have dropped that now. And I didn't have any major issues. I did not want to run Compiz. So what I ended up doing was I did have some screen tearing because I have an NVIDIA card. And what I ended up doing was just putting a command in there to turn compositing on in the NVIDIA card. You put that in the startup. We're actually going to talk more about that later on. So yes, Ubuntu Mate. Awesome. I uh, if, you, if this is your thing, go for it, man. This is my custom layout of Ubuntu Mate we're looking at. This is the exact picture I posted on Facebook. And uh, some folks asked, is this a custom layout? I said, yeah, I start out with Redmond, and then I just add the uh, switcher, the workspace switcher, and that's it. Not a whole lot of messing around. Maybe put a couple more icons in there. So the next desktop environment we're going to look at and the next distribution of Linux we're going to talk about is Zubuntu or Xubuntu whichever one you want to call that is fine with me I don't care and this is probably one of the most stripped down Ubuntu's that you can install 
I would not recommend this for somebody who's just starting out, not because of the XFCE desktop being difficult to work with. On the contrary, it's very easy to work with XFCE. It's very logical. You can drag and drop things. Like, for instance, if you want to add icons, we're going back to the Mate desktop here, and you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, we've got some really tiny little icons that are on the panel that you can click. There's little launchers. They, they're very fiddly to add. With XFCE, just drag and drop. Just drop it on there. And then you can move it around wherever you want. I was going to do a video on this, but then I didn't get to do that. I had a issue and lost the video. I did the video, thought it was pretty cool, and then the video got trashed somewhere along the way. Uh, mainly because I was switching environments so much. And I was like, well, I guess I won't be doing that. There's a great video that I did about a year ago about uh, Xubuntu, Zubuntu, that you can check out. And uh, I did the long-term support version, which is 1804. Uh, both Ubuntu Mate and Zubuntu are supported for three years for long-term support. And what that means really is, is that you'll get updates to not only the base system but the desktop itself for three years and then you won't get those desktop updates new features won't be added and things like that doesn't mean you can't use it past that point some people get very confused they're like well I thought LTS's were five years they are but some of the flavors they don't support that for that particular for, you know for that whole length of time they do it for three years and then after that you can certainly still run it and it's safe you're just going to get security updates only after that so that's kind of how it works so I find Zubuntu to be very easy to configure and play around with and you can do just all kinds of crazy stuff you can create as many panels as you like they have tools that you just right click on the panel and then uh, go to panel preferences and you can see all the items that are listed you can reorganize them there's a panel editor that's built right in moving things around is easy it has a very basic compositor in it it does not have something like Compton or Mutter or Compiz that will take care of some screen tearing issues that you might come up with so what you have to do in this case is for me at least you have to install uh, the uh, Compton compositor there's a script to do that out there you can make it's pretty easy to do and um, then you can also just turn on compositing in an NVIDIA card but some people have Intel graphics and don't have that ability to do that and they still have the issue there's never been a time that I have installed XFCE on any distribution that I didn't have issues with screen tearing and I've always had to figure out some way to turn that off but on the flip side XFCE is so popular these days it's amazing for a while there it was kind of a dead desktop walking they said it wasn't being developed and it was probably gonna die and it was gonna go away and now it has a resurgence because not only do you have Zubuntu Manjaro, the main flavor of Manjaro, ships with the XFCE desktop. Right now, one of the hottest Linux flavors out there, I guess, not an Ubuntu official flavor, but just a flavor, is MX Linux. That comes with XFCE. It's good to go. And if it works with your video card, it's a fantastic desktop. It really is. So, really can't find horrible, terrible, bad things to say about it. It's it was a fun experience. I ran this for three or four days. I was really tempted to stay with it for a while, and then I decided to move on and try other things, which is why we have this video. So the last thing that I tried, just goofing around, was Ubuntu 19.04. And Ubuntu 19.04, there was a lot of talk about it when it first came out about all of the performance improvements and I ran this for one day I was so tickled with it and said it was flawless when I posted my little thing on Facebook and then I ran smack dab into a bug and that is if the computer goes to sleep when it wakes up the background image and the little screen that comes down they turn into white noise it gets very weird 
And I looked it up, and it's it's a known bug. So I was like, oh, man, I can't use this. I have to roll back to 18.04. But other than that, I didn't find any issues with this. It, it was a really fun desktop to play with, and GNOME dropped the active desktop completely, so now Ubuntu ships with an extension that gives you a kind of sort of active desktop. And I guess since the GNOME project has decided they don't want to deal with that anymore, that's the way it's got to be. Also, GNOME decided that having the transparency in the panel up top, they couldn't handle that anymore, and they didn't want to deal with it. So they dropped that as well. So you'll see in this picture that you can't get that neat transparency up top. And so the Ubuntu developers decided to go ahead and drop the transparency behind the dock as well. Okay. I'm not really going to complain about that. Uh, QT integration is okay with the new Yaru theme. Looked fine to me. I was running all kinds of QT apps and looked okay. So thank you for that. And I don't know what happens if you go to dark themes because a lot of times that's what happens is you switch the theme and then the integration doesn't work because it doesn't work with that particular theme or whatever. I don't. I'm not big into theming anymore. I used to care. There's a lot of things about working with desktops that I used to really care about, like can I change all the colors and can I do this? And right now my main deal is font size and is the anti-aliasing on and is it consistent and can I see it? That's it. <laughs> I don't really care about the theming and things like that. I've I've gotten kind of gotten away from that. So yeah, other than the bug. They got kernel 5.0 on here, and there are so many really cool things coming down the road for Ubuntu. When we get to 2004, which is going to be the next uh, long-term support release, there's going to be a lot of things in there. Like, we're going to have ZFS available on root, and I know that unless you're a real Linux head, you probably don't know what that is, but it's the ZFS file system, which is way more advanced than EXT4, a lot more stable than, let's say, ButterFS. And it gives you a lot of options like system snapshots, and it's just crazy what ZFS will do. Uh, so we're going to have that natively in Ubuntu. You have been able to put it in, but you had to compile your own kernel module, and it couldn't run on root and all that kind of stuff. Licensing issues mainly has kept that from happening. But I'm really anxious to take a look at 2004. We're about eight months away from that now. It's always about this period of time I've noticed that I when we're into a long-term support release of Ubuntu, and I've been doing this since 904, paying attention to the long-term support releases. Or was it 1004? Yes, 1004 was a long-term support release, and that was really the first time that I became aware of that when I first started hanging around Linux, so that would have been uh, April of 2010. And then, uh, so each one of these I end up using for quite some period of time and then we get about where we are we're about six to eight months away from the next long-term support version and I start getting itchy it's like okay I'm ready for the next one now let's see what we're gonna do so yeah I think it's actually gonna be really cool no matter what desktop you use we just had a new XFCE come along that has just released the other day uh, we have a lot of work going on with the Mate desktop I know that there's a lot going on with Ubuntu's spin of GNOME, and they're probably going to iron out the little bug that I had, and I'll just deal with it. That's the thing about interim releases. If they work for you, that's great. When you're not on a long-term support release of Ubuntu, sometimes you might run across a little buggy-boo there, and eh, they don't necessarily get fixed. They, they sort of get fixed the next, distri you know, the next one down the road. So... That is the way it is. So I have rambled on um, and given you my thoughts on all of this stuff. Uh, just to sum up real quick before we move into the comments section of the video, I think it's all great. I am impressed. My mind goes back to back in the days of GNOME 2 and Ubuntu 8.04, 8.10, where there's just bugs all over the place. This is... A lot of people who are coming to Linux or have come to Linux in the last couple of years don't have a clue the way it used to be. I mean, when you got a kernel update years ago, 
that automatically meant that your video drivers were going to break and you'd have to reinstall them on a lot of distributions. It used to be a real pain just to play a YouTube video on a Linux system. You'd have to go and find Flash and you'd have to install it and then even once you did it, it didn't necessarily work with X all that well, which is the display server, and you'd full screen a video and your frame rate would go down to five frames per second. And I'm not exaggerating. That was a problem in Ubuntu 10.04. They fixed it in 10.10. Ubuntu 10.10 was really the first Ubuntu that I ever used that everything worked. And I didn't have any major bugs. And that was also the first distribution where, or the first, yeah, the first distribution of Ubuntu where Canonical put a button in the installer that said, okay, click this and you get your codecs so you can play MP3s and you can play back video formats and DVDs and you can play flash video on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. It was a huge revelation, man. And it, that's like nine years ago now. And since then, we don't even think about those things. We just expect that everything's going to work. And if you are running Firefox or Chrome or Vivaldi or whatever browser you have, chances are if you click on Netflix, you're going to be able to play the videos. You can play all kinds of games. You can... So it's just grown by leaps and bounds. People who are new to Linux, they don't see this stuff. I mean, they don't know how good it is. And everything that I use these days is good. None of it is bad. I mean, all of these little things, like nitpicking here and a little bug there with VirtualBox running in Ubuntu 1804, where if I full screen a VM in 1804, then sometimes the keyboard drops. Big deal used to be years ago just stuff just didn't work so anyway let's move on to your comments so the first one is from Richard you are awesome dude but really gnome what's wrong with XFCE and what happened to Ubuntu Mate or Linux Mint it's like everyone left the party dude I would open my arms to gnome but I'm very skeptical about it trust issues Richard calm down first of all I didn't leave the party man like I said I've got all this stuff going all the same time we're just looking around so chill on that level right there what's wrong with XFCE actually nothing's wrong with XFCE but as I alluded to earlier in the video there is this thing that once you use the GNOME desktop for a while you get very beguiled by its ways and you go back to a more traditional desktop environment like Mate XFCE or even something like Budgie and uh, we haven't talked at all about KDE in this video. I know that one of the biggest flavors is Kubuntu. I know there's guys out there who really like it. I'm just not a KDE person, gang. I am i don't hate it like I used to. I used to really hate KDE. I don't anymore. I, I, could, I could use it if I had to. Let's put it that way. But it's still not my favorite. So please don't feel like that you've been scorned. This is just what I've used. And since I've used two iterations of GNOME, um, that's where these comments are coming from. I, I guess maybe the best thing that I can tell you is is to install it and play with it for a while. And if it doesn't work for you, if you don't like the workflow, fine. No problems. Totally understood. I used to be the same way. But nowadays, I really don't want to use anything else, which is weird in and of itself. <laughs> so it's all right, man. It's Linux. We don't have to be throwing bombs at each other and yelling back and forth. It's okay. Everybody can use whatever they want to. <laughs> uh, this is a comment that I had to say something about because through the years on this channel, we have looked at I don't know how many different distributions of Linux. And there's always people out there that tend to think that I, for some reason, just am completely unable to decide on one thing and I'm just jumping from one to another it's like a personal vlog and what they don't take into account is is that I'm always looking for some sort of content for this channel or things to talk about and also a lot of people ask questions and they tell me things are really cool so yeah I do do a lot of testing and I talk about them so it's not a matter of jumping around as much as it is 
that it's a matter of let's go check this out for a while i know what i like i mean i can tell you straight up that my first choice right now is ubuntu 1804 with gnome second choice right now would probably be ubuntu mate i have got a machine in this house right now i have three machines running ubuntu mate full time no 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 excuse me ubuntu with gnome one machine runs the mate desktop because it's a little netbook and it's the only thing that I can run my mother's machine at her house, which I still administer, even though she's not here in the house. I still think of it as a machine that's kind of mine. She's across town, but you know what I mean. Uh, she's running Linux Mint 18.3. Very happy with that. So all of this stuff is happening all the time. It's not like I have one computer and I'm constantly changing this out. But every time that I do stuff like this, somebody comes along and says that. And you know what I finally realized is, Alexander, is that you may think that this is a personal vlog, and it really isn't. This is a project. Easy Linux is pretty big. Pretty big community, man. Go check out easylinux.com uh, and click on Easy Talk and... Uh, look at some of the other videos here on the channel you get the idea after a while so I'm just trying to keep up with all you guys I mean stuff that people tell me is, is cool you know what I mean so no harm no foul I'm not upset that, about this comment I'm just telling you I just do this man I think anybody in the community who's commenting on it needs to you need to take a look at what's going on not long ago I gave Manjaro a spin for a while not bad not my cup of tea I don't I like Ubuntu and I like Debian. Those are my, the whole Ubuntu Debian ecosystem is just where I'm most comfortable. But I'm not knocking anybody who wants to use Arch or OpenSUSE or Manjaro or any of the other flavors. Go for it. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this. I always had video tearing with XFC on all my machines, regardless of the distros I tried it on. Same here. I mentioned that earlier. And I think a lot of people have that experience with it, and it depends on the hardware that you're using. And if you have an NVIDIA card, there is a command that you can do. Just what for whatever card you have, look up Turn On Compositing. And it does a compositing thing in the card where it, instead of having to have a compositor running in memory, it's running in the card, and that way it will sync everything up and you won't get the screen tearing issues. But I've also talked to people who had Intel cards, and there's not a whole lot that they can do about it. If there's a command out there to fix that, I was thinking that maybe you guys out there who know how to deal with screen tearing on XFCE could maybe in the comments here point, uh, you know, point that out, point out your solutions, and we can maybe at some point if I get a bunch of those I'll put them together I'll go check them out and maybe we'll do a follow-up video at some point down the road talking about dealing with screen tearing in XFCE directly and maybe some of you guys with different cards can come up with different ideas so what do you think that participation thing there these are all about Mate all cool comments about Mate the first one comes from Martin Wimpress and he says, I fixed so many bugs for the upcoming 1910 release. See, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to run 1904 on my machine was so I could run 1910 in a virtual machine. And I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm just going to have to appraise it in a live environment if I can't make it work because I've got that bug. I don't know. But thank you, Martin, for the heads up. It's always nice to know when you... Or, you know jump in it anything this man has to say as far as i'm concerned is just solid gold and uh, he also does another service to the community which i would like to highlight in this video is that he maintains a piece of software called mp3 gain that was removed from the ubuntu repositories i think in 1604 it disappeared and i don't know why they took it out but it is a wonderful little audio leveling piece of software that works with mp3 files and it levels them at the file level so it doesn't matter what player you're using and for those of us who have very large collections of mp3s 
it is an absolute must. So thank you, Martin, for doing that. He also has another one called AAC Gain that's available, and all you got to do if you want to find that or find out more about the software that Martin makes available for Ubuntu is do a search for Martin Wimpress PPA, and you'll have links to the launch pad. So Tim says, I have tried it and went back to Linux Mint. Yeah, some people have that reaction to it. Maybe you just feel more comfortable with Mint, even if you're using Mint with the Mate desktop. That's perfectly fine. I Like I said, it's horses, different horses for different courses, and some people are really the Mate type person. Like my brother, for the longest time, he was using Linux Lite, and then he had to get off of that. We had to do something, and I put him on Ubuntu Mate 18.04, and he just loves it. He It's been a wonderful experience for him. It's very solid, and it works great, so, yeah, as it is. Uh, it is great as a lightweight alternative, and, yeah, I know. <laughs> Martin doesn't like it when people call it lightweight, but it actually is. It's lightweight when it runs, but it's not lightweight on the software that you get installed with it. I can tell you that much. It's a very well done distribution. So, yes, it is, but I don't see that as a bad thing. And so, finally, the last comment here Glenn, how did you get that menu at the top left? Well, it's like I said, all you got to do is use the Redmond preset under the in Mate Tweaks, and then that's it it pops up and it's called the actually that is known as the mint menu it was developed by Linux Mint years ago to be used with GNOME 2 and now Mate uses it and they call it the advanced menu and that's my favorite menu that you can use with a Mate desktop and that is also Jeremy O'Connell's favorite menu and he gets very animated when we start talking about it because Jeremy does not like the brisk menu and he does not think that that should be default in Ubuntu Mate. Eh, okay, I'm not getting involved with that. Here's a great, uh, just a good comment from Mike McKinley here. He says, the beautiful thing about Linux, use whatever you like, however you like it, and refuse to call, and I refuse to call it GNOME. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you. People go, but it's gonna no it's not ladies and gentlemen for 20 years this desktop environment has been around and in the united states and in the, in the uk we have called it gnome gnome is a word it refers to a little garden mythical garden creature little small dude as a matter of fact the the logo for the gnome project is the little gnome foot and has been for years and now they have come along and said, we would like you to call it Gnome. And I say, no, I'm not going to do that. Just no. And Brian Lunduk posted a video not too long ago where he, he said the same thing. It's a word. So it's just, this is really dumb, stupid marketing. You don't change your name. You can't do this, Gnome people. You can't do it because it'll just confuse the hell out of people. And Linux is already more confu is confusing as it is. I mean, why do we want to <laughs> confuse people? So, yeah, I will continue to call it GNOME. I like it, but I'm... I, you want to call it GNOME, you go right ahead. That's fine. I'm calling it GNOME. And that about does it for this video. I, like I said, I, I don't... I didn't quite know where this was going to go. My idea here was just to do something about what I have been looking at and I kind of realized that I wasn't going to be going any further with the flavors and all that other stuff and so this is this is it this is that this is what it is it's just a hangout we're just discussing things your input is always welcome I almost forgot the feedback slide this time around now didn't I but I didn't. I remembered to put it up here. So check out EasyLinux.com for more about Linux. I've got some people asked me the other day, do you have any papers about your attitudes about Linux? And I've, it's pretty much all on EasyLinux.com. And I wrote that stuff right when I launched the project. And I still pretty much believe everything that I put in there. So if you want to go read that stuff, that's great. Because uh, if you want to kind of know where I'm coming from, it's all up there. Plus a nice FAQ. So if you have questions, before you hit contact us, read the FAQ.
it it'll save both of us a lot of time it really does and uh, you need to check that out as well if you're going to be hanging around on the easy linux page we have easy talk which is a forum for you guys i don't really get in there as much as i'd like to i kind of i'm a moderator of course and we have several great moderators but that's really for you guys to talk about and, and uh, i kind of run my mouth everywhere else you know so if you would like to interact with some people who are desktop Linux users, uh, we got a great bunch there. Check it out. Please be sure to give Easy Linux a like on Facebook. If you're a Facebook user, all of the comments in this video came from Facebook this time around. I figured I would show them some love just simply because of the fact that I have been posting the screenshots as I have been doing my testing in Facebook. And uh, that's that. So there you go. Now, the $64,000 million question that I'm sure that is burning way down deep inside of you that you want an answer to before I wrap this video up is what distribution of Linux are you running right now? Well, let's just close this and you will see that I am running Ubuntu 1804 with the GNOME desktop baby. This is, yes, and I will even prove it by showing you the video recording software and turning on the preview function. See, this is exactly what we are using. And I use Simple Screen Recorder to record these videos. So that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Anyway, I'm going to pause this with the mouse, and I always have to look for it. There it is. Pause. Bye.